Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 229, we are talking about getting your family to help out more. So let's untangle it. Hi, I'm Hillary, a serial overcomplicator. I'm also a nurse, mom to three, and the curly head behind Pulling Curls and the Pregnancy Nurse. This podcast aims to help us stop overcomplicating things and remember how much easier it is to keep things simple. Let's smooth out those snarls with Pregnancy and Parenting Untangled, the Pulling Curls podcast. Big thanks to today's sponsor, Practical Parenting. If you guys are looking to just up your parenting game by a notch, come join me in Practical Parenting, where we help give you some ideas to make your parenting game just a little bit better. Oh, and did I mention it's free? Find it in the show notes. Okay. Let me just give this giant caveat for you here. I made this episode called Help Out More, which means you are in there with them. I I just have to say that after so many years of parenting, I have not found that my kids are ever going to be great about doing things without me there. So having them there, pitching in with them has really shown the best results rather than me saying, okay, it's time for you to clean the bathrooms because I've already cleaned mine. And then they go into it. It's never worked for me. I don't know. Maybe I'm parenting wrong. Tell me in the comments. And now like I clean my bathroom just at the same time they clean theirs. When they see me doing the work somehow, and maybe that's teenagers, they're just better about doing it. Now, when you have little kids, you are going to have to help them. You're going to, you're teaching them how to do the things. But even with teenagers, I've still found that saying, okay, it's time to clean just still doesn't get very good results, unfortunately. Okay, second thing is to set your expectations clear. Tell them exactly what you want done, that it needs to be done until X, Y, Z. Because a lot of times I'll say, okay, it's time to clean the bathrooms. And my kids will come back. Okay, I cleaned them, but I need to be clear in that I want you to wipe around the floor of the toilet, not just swipe the toilet with a rag and be done. So you have to make expectations clear. Kids tend to want to do the minimum. So if you set expectations and say that's how it needs to be done every time, you really end up ahead of the game, which again is more work for you, but it's preloading work that hopefully you just have to do once and then they understand that that's the expectation and they should be doing it that way every time, especially with older kids. If you notice kids sliding, make sure you're setting those expectations so that they're helping getting the work done and you're not having to come in afterwards and then redo it behind them, which is like the worst. Okay, third one is to make it fun. If you guys have listened to our Saturday Clean episode, we clean, we just play a song. Every song we rotate rooms. So we go bathrooms, bedrooms, living room, kitchen, playroom. So we just go through those rooms. There's five different songs. It takes about 20 minutes, depending on how long the songs are. I have an upbeat playlist that we go through and it just makes it fun. We're all kind of like jamming out to the tunes while we're doing it. So I can't tell you how important music is. Also, I like the idea of just switching rooms every time they know it's not going to like take forever. You know, every room we're just focused on doing that room and then switching. Um, If you guys want to check out that Saturday clean, it's a good one. It really helps my family to help me out more. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes. Okay, finally, here's my last tip. Be super busy. My oldest had to pitch in because I was not here very much. Um, When he was an early teenager, we were building this business. I was still working as a nurse. My husband was working. He just had to pitch in more. He picked up my daughter at the sitters that was a few houses away, brought her home. He had to get her going. Sometimes he had to get dinner going. And if you look at kids who ended up being really self-sufficient it's because they've been required to be self-sufficient and sometimes just not being here has helped them to do that so I know a lot of parents are like oh I don't want to be too busy I want to be there to support my kids but I do think that there is a big advantage to kids who literally just have to learn how to be self-sufficient and help you out more because you're just not there you're so busy so I'm not saying that you should fill your schedule so that your kids have to do more but literally not being there sometimes kids just have to step up to the mark and if you set those expectations and they know what they're going to do sometimes that really kicks in for them So tell me over on Instagram, what have you done to get your family to help out more? Is that a dream of yours or do you love doing all the work around your house by yourself? I'd love to start the conversation over there. So please come join me. Thanks for joining me today on this episode. And of course, Family Routines is all about getting your kids to do more. So come join me in there if you're interested or join me in Practical Parenting. That's free to kind of get an idea of how things are going to go.
Okay, stay tuned. Next week, I am going to talk about confrontation. I get so many friends who are like, oh, I don't like confrontation. And I'm like, isn't life full of confrontation? So we're going to talk about that. And then the week after that, for my pregnant friends, we're going to talk about busting some induction myths based off of my own induction experience. So stay tuned. Thanks for joining us on the Pulling Curls podcast today. If you liked today's episode, please consider reviewing, sharing, subscribing. It really helps our podcast grow. Thank you. Thank you.